All right. So I am really, really excited about having this opportunity to be with you. And as I always do, I would really like to begin with a prayer. So Creator, Great Mother, Father, on this good day, we give thanks for this way of gathering together and ask that it work well for us during this time because we want to exchange such good things. And so bless us, bless each one that's on this call. We know that coming together, joining our hearts in a loving and beautiful way is how we're going to make the difference in this world that allows a beautiful and harmonious and sweet and good world for each and every one of us and all our relations. So we give great thanks today as we begin and we send this out to all others who might have wanted to be here, all others who will hear the recording and all others who might be in need of this positive, beautiful energy we're going to create. So with great thanksgiving, we begin. Ho, it's okay, awesome. So I'm just gonna jump right in here because my intention is to serve you as well as I can with this very, very short time that we have. So uh, I've got some notes here and the main reason I have my notes is because I could probably talk for four days about all of this, these things. And so I've tried to get it shortened down a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just gonna start by saying that something that makes me sad and that is that you were put through years and years and years of schooling. And that schooling was a kind of training that you were in a lot of time. And that training was, was meant because it was started about the time that Ford, Henry Ford and all the big boys started the factories and began to manufacture and use the factories as a way of doing things. The Carnegie Institute set it up to train you to be good factory workers, to be good little people. You know, Americans in those days were like a wild and, you know, frontier bunch, you know, and they needed to be settled down. And so what you were taught to do was to sit down, shut up. You don't be laughing. You don't be talking. You don't get up and move around. If you have to pee, you raise your hand and I might let you do that. So you were trained to be good factory workers and you were trained to respect authority and you were trained to listen to someone else who told you the way it was. And then you were supposed to offer that back. And if you did, you were a good little girl or a good little boy, especially if you shut up and behaved and, and tried to be the best you could be in that situation. So the, the sad thing is that you didn't even know what true education might have been. Because true education comes out of the Latin word educare. And education is about to educ, educe, bring forward, bring out of you who you are. It's not about stuffing something in. It's about allowing your aliveness to be up dancing and running and playing and shouting and pretending and imagining and having a marvelous time and becoming more and more and more and more of who you are. The absolute rare, incredible gift to the world that you are. But that didn't happen. So I've been spending a lot of time in my life seeing if I can make a difference in that. I didn't get caught in it too much early on because my mom had me on the, I was in the wild country riding a horse in the back hills most of the time and taking correspondence courses for many years. And then I came into the schools. But I'm really interested in giving you an education 
inviting out of you what is truly there and offering you information and wisdom that helps you find that, helps you find it individually and helps you find it as a gathering of people because together we have enormous, enormous power. So just quickly, let's think about the way primary people did things. A child was birthed, and many of you have maybe been in a room with a birthing child. What happens is this amazing, radiant, incredible light fills the room. And that's the spirit, that's the beingness of this new person coming in. <clears throat> and so then, in a short while, the wings of spirit calm down and tuck down. And there's a kind of an inward process going on <clears throat> for about four or five years. So then at about five years, wise people know to start watching children and seeing who they are. What do they like to do? Are they singing? Are they taking clay and molding it into little figures? Are they, uh, you know, that they love playing with their dolls and being mommy? What, what is it that they're showing? And how is their spirit showing itself? I want to tell you one instance, because what happened would be when they saw who you, they thought you probably were and wanted to be, <clears throat> excuse me, they put you with those kind of folks. If they thought you wanted to be an artist, <clears throat> excuse me, you got to hang out with all the artists. If they thought you, were going to be a great warrior, hung out with those folks. And I want to tell you an example of one beautiful child. I spent some time and was engaged to a San Felipe Pueblo man down in New Mexico, <clears throat> and they did a dance called Corn Dance. And the way it happened was a few dancers came out and they were holding the big staff that had the symbol of the corn and growth and renewal and all the things that dance was about. And maybe a couple dancers danced in front and then a bunch of drummers, boom, 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 that big drum came and then hundreds of dancers behind them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in this particular clan, when they, that hundreds of people danced into the plaza, leading them was a kid that I would guess might have been six or seven years old. And he was dancing. He never, never missed a step. He was totally focused on that flag and he danced. I mean, he was an inspiration. Well, guess who probably took him on? The medicine people, the spirit teachers. He was showing himself to them and they would have taken him and developed that in the most profound way that they could. Does that make sense to you as what education is? Give me a nod anyway. I, don't, I won't be able to catch up with the chat too much. So, I think of another instance, my friend Maladoma Patrice Somme, a Dagara shaman in Burkina Faso, said that the job of every single individual in the village was to draw out the best in everyone. If they bring out the best mother, the best cook, the best potter, the best warrior, the best herdsman, the best, the best of everything, then we all benefit. There's no competition, no putting each other down, no jealousy. It's about bringing forth our very, very, very best. And that's what Creator, I believe, meant for us to do. So that's where I want to go with what I'm doing these days, is I want to offer you uh, wisdom and information that I think can really be helpful to you that can uh, really make a difference in your ability to be yourself, to deal with the issues that are coming up now, which are big time for each of us personally and for our world. I want to give you everything I can think of because what I've done with my life, I look back at it sometimes and I haven't had family and all of that so much. I've been out in the world teaching 
and offering what I can. And I think that's what I came to do. I've been learning, I'm curious, I'm still learning. I'm in profound learning space right now. And my joy is to offer you what I have found. And, you know, I do it in a way unselfishly, but another part of it is selfish because I know what a beautiful place this is. I am crazy in love with the Mother Earth and the beauty that's here and the possibility that's here for all of us. I'm so clear about that. I'm so excited. I'm supposed to live to 127, which means I need to keep doing this for how many, like 50 years more? So, but I'm hoping, I'm going, okay, I'm willing to do it, but I wanna see a golden and beautiful time before I leave this earth. And that's my dedication. That's what I wanna be doing. So first of all, I wanna to talk to you women. I think we've got some guys on here. A lot of them signed up anyway. Hi, if, if there are men. I don't see too many of you on my little uh, screen here. So what I want to say to you women is that we are carrying the jobs of both our grandfather and our grandmother. We are not only taking care of the children and the birthing and the uh, home and the stuff and the laundry and the la 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 all of that and the social and the gathering and the caring and the nurturing and getting up at night and all of that we're also out there working many of you a 40-hour week <clears throat> and that's in the midst of a time on earth when there's pollution um stress of all kinds coming to us, stress from not having good food, stress from our water, stress from our air, uh, all of these things are coming together to challenge us. So I know that many of you women are stressed, probably half overwhelmed. And so my primary dedication in the last few years has been to um, try to make a difference in that. And I feel I have some powerful things to offer in that way. Because one of the interesting things is that the Dalai Lama himself has said, we women will be the saving of the world. And I think he meant also the feminine energy will be the saving of the world. So not only do we have our grandfather and our grandmother's job, we also just have one little other thing to do. And that's save the world. So we need to have a lot of support, a lot of health, a lot of vibrance, a lot of vital life in order to do that. So it's interesting, we kind of caught ourselves or we were caught in a catch 22 because when we got to step out as women, that was pretty amazing. You know, we stepped out and showed that we were incredibly brilliant, capable, able, absolutely amazing people out there in the world. The weird thing is now that we've kind of gotten caught in that, so we have to be out there a lot of the time. We can't be home, we can't find our feminine side very much because there's a necessity to be out there. So we don't get very much slack at all. And so the patriarchy has caught us in a lot of ways because we haven't been given the women's teachings that would help us. And I'm just going to cut right to the chase and say that your womb is the big magic in the human form. And I'm sharing this with you guys too. I mean, to be able to bring a life forth into the world is really amazing magic. And when we choose, I think we've lived a million times, all of us, men, women, back and forth. But when we choose a female body as we have in this lifetime, then we really receive enormous magic. And that magic is about our womb. It's about birthing new life. And when we spend time and have time, as I do in the teachings that I offer, I'm gonna talk about the moon time, about menstrual time, and about not only how we deserve, need, 
and are going to call for four days off a month. That's the old teaching. We as women are on 24 seven. There's no Sunday, there's no midnight when your kid's crying. You are on all the time. And in smart, wise societies, they knew that and they gave women four days off and that time was during the dark of the moon when we bleed. So that time was meant for rest and rejuvenation. Can you imagine? Ah, beautiful days, quiet, sweet. The grandmother's bringing you something wonderful to drink and rest and just rest. And the other part of it that not many people talk about, and I want to offer you as well, when we have time together, is that the veil between human beings and the great mystery is the thinnest with women in their moon time, in their menstrual time, under the dark of the moon where we naturally bleed, sitting together in meditation. We go deep into the great mother's womb where all intelligence, inspiration, creativity, and magic is. And our purpose during at least two days of that four is to bring forth magic, to bring forth newness, to see, to be seers, to be visionaries. That deep feminine connection with the heart of life. So all of that teaching is what I really want to offer you. And I'm going to be doing a, my, a lot of you probably know that I'm beginning and launching my Power and Beauty series. And part of that, one strong part of that, is Women of Beauty and Power, about magic and manifestation. And so I'll have time in that to really go deeply into this because I want you gals to have this information to base your life in and to allow you to begin to choose and ask for this kind of time off. Women in Iceland are starting to get one day off for their moon and their productivity has gone up, their health has gone up, everything has gone up. So we need to have that kind of time and we're going to have it. And I'm an absolute proponent of that. So there's so much, I mean, I just have to move on here, but there's so much that I want to share with you. And, you know, um, the thing is that I want to speak to men about all of this too. I, I've put together a course for men uh, called Men Standing Tall. And I think that it's important for guys to have this information. I'm, I'm your elder sister, guys. I'm... I'm going to get down to the nitty gritty and tell you what's going on, going on with women, what's going on with this awakening time of the feminine and how to step up and stand up in it in a way that makes you incredibly happy and as well really serves the world with your incredible energy. You guys are amazing. And I want you to understand the deepest level of that and as well to be able to serve and part of that service comes in serving the, the people around you. In the indigenous way, a true man is a man who certainly uses his masculine, you know, get out there and do it and handle it and make it and use those muscles and all of those things that are the masculine and, and men's bodies are able to do. And, and to be a true man you use that capability in service of the people. A great chief not only leads the people, he leads, he's not, he's not just a big, a big shot. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm wonderful and I can boss you around and I can do anything I want. He is there to serve. And the grandmothers who, after their many years in their moon lodges were the wisest of the tribe. They were the guides and helpers and chose the chiefs and deposed the chiefs. And wouldn't I like to have our grandmothers now be able to depose those who are uh, supposedly leading us. So that, that masculine really incorporates the feminine. And you know we've been in the patriarchal times for 
oh, a good 4,000 years probably. And we know that it's been challenging for women. You know, a lot of our women's ways haven't been taught. A lot of the feminine has been suppressed and repressed. There's been abuse and many other kinds of things that are very obvious about and to women. But you know what? The guys have suffered too. Patriarchy just isn't male. It's a, it's a way of doing things where someone's at the top and a few friends and everybody gets the good stuff and then there's the rest of everybody down here not doing so well and not really cared about. And so, and, and there's been this odd thing about push and shove and force and, and uh, you know, change things and Mother Earth didn't do it right, we're gonna fix it. And, uh, you know, there's been this very strange energy and all of this, a lot of this technology that we've had, which doesn't take into consideration all our relations, all our people, taking care of all our people like a true man would. We've pushed ourselves into a place where we're really in great danger and men have been caught in that as well. And one of the things I want to say to you guys is that the feminine is really important to you and I know it's been put down and people say you shouldn't be a sissy and blah, 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 all of that stuff. Well, you know what? The feminine is such a powerful part of you. The, in the old days, hunters, I want to tell you about hunters and how they use both the masculine and the feminine. On the islands of Polynesia, the old shamans who use the feminine, that feminine is about going deep quieting, stilling oneself, dropping into the whole and holy connection with everything. It's shaman's time. It's the way shamans work. They go in deeply and those old shamans would go in and listen. And when they came out of that, they'd say to the fishermen, over there, you know where that shoal is over by the other island, blah, 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 da, 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 da. That's where the fish are today. And the guys would go out and the fish would be there. So the men would use their masculine to go out and fish and bring and provide. Because the masculine, while the feminine is about nurturing and renewing life, the masculine is about procreating, providing, and protecting. So in men or women, that masculine comes forward. So the men used both the masculine and feminine. And I'll tell you another quick story from uh, a man, a uh, native man up in the Aleutian Islands. He said that when he was a child, these old guys would get in, in, their, in their kayaks, five or six of them, and they were going walrus hunting. Walruses are really big, if you've ever been around them. So it took four or five, six, seven guys. He said they would go out, and they, one of them would have him in front of them, and they would go out and they would sit somewhere on the ocean and just kind of keep themselves relatively together. And he said they would go into what I consider the feminine. They would go into total silence. Absolute, tall, clear, quiet, deep. He said he would be so restless, he could just, he was just a little kid, you know, he was just going crazy. But these guys were just deep, really deep. And he said, then one of them would go, oh, hey! And, or he wouldn't even point, he'd just say, oh, hey, here comes the walrus. And he said, every one of the men would turn and look at the same place, out of which would emerge in five or 10 minutes a walrus and boom, they went into action in their very masculine way and took that walrus, that big, amazing animal that gave itself to them, and took that back to provide for their people. So they were using the feminine very, very, very powerfully. So that part of us is so important and to value that. So what I, I'm, I'm doing my training is called Men Standing Tall. And I really want you guys to stand tall, to feel good about yourself, to know who you are, to know how to really get along good with us females. I'm gonna have some inside information for you that I think can really make a difference in how you are in the world and what you can offer and, and how you can relate to women. 
I'm going to talk about sex, probably to both groups, because in the beginning, I'm going to divide the men from the women. But I was just kind of laughing, um, thinking about sex and male and female and masculine and feminine energy. Now, there's the possibility to do a kind of a quieter thing, which is find the magic buttons that work really well for feminine pleasure and joy and that kind of connection, that kind of coming together, that kind of sweetness that begins to build energy and literally uplifts both of you into this amazing place. To me, there's a lot of the feminine in that which is different than what I call broomstick sex, which is boom, 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 boom. That ain't much fun. Might be enjoyable for a moment or two, but I'm telling you, there's a lot more to it and a lot more fun there and a lot more beauty there than just that. So even around sexuality, I'm no expert, but I'm willing to talk about it all. So I want to share as much as I can and uh, you know, give you as many uh, inside secrets as I can I'm definitely an elder sister to probably a lot of you, so um, I definitely want to offer as much as I can because, you know, we're in this time of the feminine and everybody's all about the women. Well, yeah, hey, it's time, but it's not about leaving you guys out because everybody has to be involved. The wholeness, the holiness comes when we are united and bringing each of our gifts, the masculine and feminine and all of us coming together in beauty. It's like white buffalo calf pipe woman brings the feminine bowl and the masculine stem, puts those together, and that's when magic happens. That's when wholeness and holiness happen. That connection, that interrelationship, that working together is what makes wonderful things happen. So that's what I'm really interested in sharing um, and really spending time with you guys. Uh, I think it's going to be really wonderful and fun. So then I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about, for both of you, men and women, about your brain. One of the things I wanted to say is that I mentioned as I put this word out about this class that I'm interested in reducing stress and overwhelm for all of you. And I'm telling you, when you women get time off, and when we start to have that kind of time for ourselves, it's going to reduce stress enormously. And when we work together, a whole other piece about the body and brain is how powerful it is for women to work together. And so there's stress reduction happening all the time. I give you as much as I can to help give you what supports you and give you what reduces stress because stress is the killer and women are having so many health challenges now we need to get this stress reduced and find a way of walking forward in a lot more harmony so i'm going to talk a little bit about your brain while we have a chance here you know creator gave you amazing capacity for intelligence and we've gotten caught as a human family, we've gotten caught in one little teeny aspect of that wonderful brain and intelligence that we've been given. We have what, it's kind of a metaphor, it's not exactly correct, but the way a lot of people talk about it is we have this triune brain. Now, the first part of our brain is this little slice of forebrain here, a little hard thing right here in the front. And that's our human brain. That's our human capacity to imagine, to dream, to hold on to the past if we want, you know, to remember our history, to be rational and critical and all of those kind of things. Those are amazing, but they have some glitches that have challenged us. And when we get caught in thinking that's the only thing that's important, we lose out. Now, the second part of our brain is the midbrain. That middle part of our brain is the old mammalian brain. And that part of our brain is about, well, the language, let me say it this way, the language of this part, this little forebrain, is speaking, just like I'm doing. The language of the midbrain, the mammalian brain, every mammal, from a squirrel to 
or whales, mammals, I think. I mean, it's amazing. All of the mammals, the language of that brain is emotion. So if anyone tells you that a mama cow bawling for her calf doesn't feel anything, they are just full of BS. They don't have any idea what they're talking about. That mama cow feels exactly the same emotion you feel. The thing she can't do, which in a way works pretty well, is she can't remember that for years and years and years and years and years and go over it and traumatize herself and have a, have a challenging time and be neurotic and crazy around it. She will get over it. She will let that go past. So that's the mammalian brain. And the one that I think we have used the least well, because the old shamans say we spend too much time in thinking and emotion. In the modern world, we go, well, what else is there? What else there is, is this ancient brain, this back part of the brain. And that is your ally and your magic. It breathes you. It moves your hormones, it moves your blood, it moves your body without you having to think and figure it out. Arising from it is all of the survival and thriving that you know how to do. And what is contained there is everything that's developed over evolutionary time that has taught us as human beings and all the ones up below us how to survive and thrive. And we've unfortunately called that brain the reptilian brain and it's that old brain and it's about survival and it's all that stuff and it's not so good. Well, that is just once again, not true. That part of your brain is your biggest ally, your best ally. That the intelligence, not intellect, but the intelligence that rises from that part of you is where it's wonderful to begin to pay attention and deepen your experience. A lot of the therapy I do works with that. And I don't know if you can guess, just think in your mind for a moment. Language is the language here, speaking. Emotion is the language there. What's the language of the old brain, that ancient, amazing ally of yours? The language of the old brain is physical sensation. So your physical body, your movement, your activity, your, you know, ooh, that hit me in the gutter. Ah, my heart's just radiating. Whatever those physical sensations are is the language of that brain. So it's interesting for us I think of our brain in a way like the stewardship of the earth. We're very caught up with being on the top. You know, this little brain, we're so wonderful as humans and we're at the top of the list, you know. Well, we're standing on everything else below us. And what we're based, our life is based in is move forward. We are breathing because of this ancient brain. And so to honor that and allow ourselves to tune in deeply to that brain and that intelligence is really, really important. Now, quantum physics is really understanding that, that that part of our brain connects us to everything. That just like White Buffalo Woman said 20 generations ago, we are in fact one being. We communicate, we're connected, everything is connected, and that's where that happens. That's where that intelligence, I think of it in a way as a feminine part of ourself. It's this deep, subconscious, quieter, absolutely amazing part of ourselves. So really honoring that part of ourself is vitally important. And what I wanna say and what I'll be teaching about in this, what the section of my teaching I call ancient brain, shaman's brain, is that trauma lives here. Trauma, if you want to heal trauma, you don't get it done by talking about it. You get it, don't get it done by emoting about it and running over it and over it and over it again. You heal trauma by getting deep 
into the subconscious, deep into the old brain, and deep into physical sensation. So I have a whole teaching about that, and a lot of the therapeutic work I do is about dropping deep into that old brain and changing things there that then naturally arise as beneficence and health and the clearing away of those things that are not serving you. So I'm a real proponent of that brain as an ally. And I also want to talk just a bit about your body, because your body is this amazing thing. We are to embody spirit. You know, a lot of people, when we think of being high and spiritual and all that, it's like getting out of our body. No, no, no. That's some patriarchal, God's in the sky, God's transcendent, God's not down here. Hey, creator, God, life, aliveness, all that is, lives right here and in every other thing in this world. And so to get into this body is what we're doing on this earth. And so your body is made from movement and change and being out in nature. I've been listening to a summit about these, these guys that are really amazing. They call it Beyond Biological Medicine. And there's all of this stuff. This guy was talking about how vital it is for us to be in sunshine, that it triggers things in our body that then create vitamins and enzymes and all of this amazing processes that are vital to us. Because not so many generations ago, we were outside most of the time. We can't change our you know, evolutionary being that soon. It takes 10,000 years to change things as far as the brain and the body and everything you know, reorganizing itself. We need to be in our body, on the ground, on the land, in nature, to be really helpful. And you know, we're, we're weak. A lot of what's going on now with, with this major challenge we have with uh, COVID and and our lack of health is not so much about a virus, it's about the fact that we are unhealthy. Our immune systems are challenged and we're in deep trouble because we don't move, we don't get out in the light, we haven't got good food. And so our challenge and part of our challenge for all of us, and I hope this power and beauty gang that come together around my training, I want us to really make a difference. I want us to have the energy to step up and step out and really start to change things right at the baseline where our food is grown and our water is kept clear and all of those things. So there's so much about the body that I want to share with you. And I wanna do one quickie thing. Uh, would you be willing to stand up? Go ahead, quick, quick, stand up. All of you, go, 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 I can see you. Stand up, stand up. And what I'd like you to do is, I would like you, and maybe you can do it sitting, but what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think about a day, let's just say it was like one of those, ah, it was an awful day, I felt terrible, it's like, oh my gosh, oh, oh, it was just awful, and kind of think about the body feeling you would have, like you might lean over, you might be draggy, your head might be down, you might be just, oh golly, it's just really a rotten day, and kind of exaggerate that, will you? Just exaggerate that, oh, awful day. And then what I want you to do is to freeze yourself in that position. I'm gonna ask you to do something else, but I want your body to stay in that position. Stay in the position. Now feel totally happy. Feel totally joyously excited and happy, so thrilled, just, just joyous and happy. Now, have you been able to see that you can't do it? You can't do it when you're in that position. So now, let yourself get your arms in the air and go, yes, this is my best day. I just won, I just did it. I just got something fabulous. Oh my God, this is one of the best things. This is the best day. And just exaggerate it. I mean, just get your arms up there and exaggerate. Oh my God, this is so exciting. I'm so thrilled. Now hold yourself there. Hold yourself there. Don't move. Hold yourself there. Leave those arms up. Leave your arms up. 
stay in that position. Now be terribly sad. Just be terribly sad. It's like the worst day. And it's like, oh my gosh, don't change your position. Don't change your position. Can you feel really terribly sad and bad when you're in this incredible up there position? So go ahead and sit down. And what I hope that you're able to notice is that your body makes an incredible amount of difference in how you are. So what I want to give you when I have more time with you is I want to give you a million tips and tricks and tools and wisdom ways to allow you to really use your body well, to just absolutely enjoy and find the magic. Creator gave us this body that is so incredible. We have amazing capacity. I was just uh, spending time with a guy named Robert Peng. I was online, but I was really interested. And he just does magical things. You know, he's a Qigong uh, uh, teacher. And he can point his finger at things and change them. He has developed his energy. The energy that Creator gave us is enormous for healing ourselves, for taking care of things around us. I mean, there's such big magic in ourselves. So I want to spend time with you really talking about that brain and um, giving you as much as I can that will really help you with your body and with your brain. And then I want to even touch just a little bit on the most powerful tool that I can share with you. Welcome those of you who just came in. So I want to talk about your heart. What's interesting is that there, if we think of brains in another way, there are several brains. One brain is kind of what's up here, right? We think of that as our brain. But they're really starting to understand that our, our gut is a brain. All our immunity, our serotonin that makes us happy, our immune system starts right there in that gut. And what goes on there has enormous influence on us. And there's a third heart, and that's your, I mean, a third brain, and that's your heart. And your heart, as I recall, from development, from child development, embryonic development, that heart develops first. That's one of the first and most powerful pieces of your beingness. And when you even think about, think about standing up, I'm not going to make you stand up, but think about standing up. I'll try to do it here. Standing up, I'm a, there's a line from sky to ground, sky to earth. And then if I put my arms out, what does that form? It forms a cross, doesn't it? It forms a cross that has been used by religions and spiritualities. But the truth of that cross is that it's saying right here at the heart, right where that line crosses, that is the center of the human experience. Our hearts are absolutely magical. And there's a lot of research now around the heart and the fact that there's a certain kind of variability of the heart that gives us incredible health. It's, it's, it's more determinant of our health than whether we smoke or run or exercise or eat right or all of that. That heart being in coherence it's the biggest resonator in the body, and it resonates and helps every other part of the body be well. And interestingly enough, how we can stimulate that coherence, that kind of heart experience, is through gratitude and acknowledgement, honoring, caring, giving our love, connecting. So, our heart is really the transformer of energy in our lives. And they've done a lot of work even with plants. I mean, we can see it in humans, but even with plants, like if there were a little plant growing here and, and I said to it, I'm gonna burn you, I'm gonna cut you down, I'm gonna do stuff. If there are electrodes fastened to that plant, that plant jerks and, and 
tucks itself and stops its breath, shuts its breathing down and shuts its ability to take in nutrients, all of those things. But correspondingly and sweetly enough, when you offer it love and say, I love you, I'm so happy, I like to water you and you're so beautiful and green and your flowers are so amazing or your fruit or whatever it might be, I just love you. Oh, that plant just opens up and breathes better and takes in more nutrient. And that's exactly how everything is. Your love, your caring, your kindness, your gratitude makes a difference. That heart energy extends at least 20 feet around you. So what you have going on in your heart makes an absolutely incredible difference. And so one of the parts of things I'm teaching is called love is the answer. And I absolutely believe it. And interestingly enough, when we have love moving in our heart, that's the most resilient we ever are. I had a very powerful teacher and he said something to me I will never forget and I'm going to say it to you and I want you to listen. Love felt in the human body is the most powerful and resilient resource we have. Love felt in the body is the most powerful resource we have. And so to find that love inside of ourselves, somebody told us a long time ago that we had to be perfectly unconditionally loving or it wasn't going to work. And it's like, I gave up on that a long time ago. I'm not that good. But I can love and I can find that in myself and I know how to find that in myself. And part of the training I want to do with you is to find that. It's not that hard. It's just think about something you love. I don't care whether it's a kitten, your mom, your child, anything, a beautiful mountain. To find that feeling of love in yourself, just like, yes. To find it and feel it in your body, and most of us feel it in our heart. Some people feel it in their back, like a good, good dad holding them. They're leaning back in someone's arms, and it just feels, they just feel that feeling of love. That feeling is the most powerful resource you have, and I want to teach you how to have that and hold it and use it, because when you have that experience in your body, and send that out into the world. You are transforming your own life because when you're running energy through your heart, that's where your purpose unfolds. Your purpose is not a, you know, doctor, lawyer, chief. It's like it's your heart expressing your uniqueness into the world. So that is your power. That is where your purpose resides. So to to find that and to move that into the world empowers you enormously. So does that make sense to you? Can I see some head shakes or yes or no? Because that's where we're needing to go. You know, the great teacher, the dawn star, the Christ light came saying, love is where it is. That whole thing about the heart is exactly where we need to go. And I believe that we can do it. And I have shown uh, to myself by teaching people, sometimes only for three or four hours at a time, and had them do absolute magic. I want to tell you a quick story about I was in Australia and teaching. I spent an evening talking about love being the answer. And um, I hadn't noticed, but a gal kind of slipped in late. And then she dashed out pretty early. And there were, you know, 50, 60 people there. So it was hard for me to track everyone. But the next day, my sponsor said, did you see my sister slip in and out? And I said, no, well, I, I guess I kind of did, but I didn't really track it very well. She said, well, that was my sister. And she called me. It was a, a day later in the late evening. She said, she called me tonight. She is the head of a nonprofit that helps young people in trouble. And she just became the CEO after a national football star from Australia was the director. And he had a lot of connections and he raised a lot of money. So here's this gal, just sort of ordinary gal, you know. And she's having her big fundraiser the next day after that talk. 
And she told her sister that night, she said, you know what? She said, I really practiced that. I just found love in my heart and it felt vulnerable and kind of scary, but I just kept doing, I just kept opening my heart and letting the love I have for these kids show and, and just letting my love pour out to the people who came and my gratitude and my honoring and my caring for them. She said, do you know what I did? I raised over a million dollars today. She said, and I think it was because I let myself love. She said, so tell Brooke thanks. So I believe it works. It really works. When we love, when we extend that energy, creator's pouring that energy. Creator made us of it. Love and light. Mother, love, and father, light, boom, coming together in passion is what created the universe. We are love. It is who we are. Creator's pouring it in all the time. And the only reason we wouldn't pour it out is because one, we're ignorant, and now you're not ignorant. I've already told you. And the other reason is we're greedy or lazy. It's like, come on, let's go. Let's, let's move this love out into the world and transform everything around us. Because when we love and when we care for people, they feel safe enough to be themselves and offer their beautiful gifts into the world. And we care for things and take care of them and honor them. So I really do think love is the answer. And I'm going to stop talking now about all of that and, and just take a minute to, to invite you into the training that I'm doing. Because I would just love to have you be with me. Um, I think that training overall is going to be um, probably 20, 30 hours of training over a couple months' time, probably an hour or so a week over Zoom like this. And there's going to be women of beauty and power, really focusing with you women on exactly the power that I'd love to see you have and the empowerment and the beauty and the sweetness and the restfulness and the good things and the absolute incredible magic that you are. And then at the same time, I'll be teaching for men, men standing tall. I want you guys to know, and I'd, I'd love to have you women talk to your guys about this. I want them to know the baseline of the feminine, of what's going on with women, of what's going on inside themselves and how they can really step up and feel great about themselves and have a wonderful time in their life and a wonderful time with the women in their lives. So Shenandoah, I'm hoping you're on. And would you put in the chat, would you put that URL for, um, for the uh, training? I don't know if she's there. I know it's going to be on our website and we're going to send something out before long. I'm just going to grab it here because I hope I can do this copy and see if I can get it in the chat. Okay, here it goes to do. Hopefully that's going out to everyone. And the, the other thing that's going to be there, as I told you, is a series called Love is the Answer. We'll spend four or five weeks on that. And then the last part is going to be the Ancient Brain Shaman's Brain. And uh, I'll just go into everything I can think of to serve you. So I'm... I'm very much excited about this training and about the chance to, to be able to be with you a lot more fully. And one of the things I want to ask you, and I don't know how we can do this, maybe you can, are you all able to chat? Can you wave if you can get in that chat? Have you been able to chat? Okay. Because one of the things that has come up is that with COVID, with the California fires, I mean, my, my daughter, who's my assistant, uh, you know, ended up getting evacuated right in the middle of all of this when we're trying to do all of this. So one of the things we have been considering, if there were enough people interested, we might just do the first part of the training. You know, the, the power and beauty training is the whole thing. But 
the beauty and power for women and the men standing tall is just one segment. And if I thought enough of you were interested, I might open that up and, you know, of course it would be a lesser charge and then down the line, uh, I'll be, you know, teaching the rest of them. But if there were enough of you interested in the train, I'd, I'd love to have you all come into the training. We have uh, a three pay plan and a five pay plan as well. And uh, I would love that. But if any of you are really, really interested in um, just the, the beginning training and feel like you could do that where maybe you couldn't do the other, I would really love to hear from you. I know Shannon Doa said that, um, you know, she would be glad to hear from you uh, on the, you know, you could just reply back and send her an email at the BME wisdom at gmail.com. Um, just, you know, the one we sent you out the notice from. And um, I just love to hear from you if you're interested in just that beginning course, because I'm going to need some more men to even do that one. And I would just love to have you joining. We've got uh, a good group of women now, and I would love to have more of you join us for that. So um, if you have any questions, you can certainly put them in the, I'm going to see if I can see them when you put messages in here if you have anything to ask me about any of this uh, i'd be glad to answer and just stick around a little bit and do that I'm trying to see if i see anything here as far as questions so also it'd be interesting to see if if any of you uh um would just put a big yes in if you're interested in in the, the beginning training, uh, the women's training or the men's training. Um, I'd love to hear from you about that because it's a lot of work to recreate this and uh, set it up and set up the payments and things. So if there were enough of you interested, we'd be willing to do that. And um, otherwise I would just really love to have you uh, um, join us. Someone's asking here, um, Caroline, um, asking about women after menopause and that's a whole that's going to be a whole part of our series because wisdom the older women are what i would call wisdom women and there's so much about that because i think the older women are the ones now that can be the most powerful especially retired women might have a little more time to actually do this work that needs to be done in the world and it's so important for us to understand that the charge when women go into their moon pause or menopause in for, when they formally do that the charge they take on and commit to is to not just pay attention to the children around their skirts in a sense you know around their their own life but to really care for the children of all things the children of all the family of life so there's enormous teaching around that that i will be including in the women's teaching that i do and it's a it, it's take some time so I'll be glad to share that but know that there is that kind of teaching and it's really really important as we're in this time that we do that teaching any other questions I'd be glad to answer questions from anyone if you write them in here I'll try to see them and see if there are any other questions in here Oh, someone ha asked how long we'll be. I'm willing to stick around and talk for another while, but the formal part of the teaching is over. So uh, for those of you who have to leave, uh, I sure appreciate your being with me and uh, hope that you uh, stay in touch because I'm hoping to put out a lot of different things that will be of service to you and uh, looking forward to doing that. Thanks for letting me uh, experiment with this wonderful moment that we've had together. I think it went pretty well, didn't it? Someone's asking about doing ceremony. Um, 
one of the things I can do is point you towards ceremony. In this class, what we're going to do is I'll be sharing a lot of information and inviting you to use that information in your own way. One of the things I've thought of doing is creating a membership group or even uh, I, I wish there were a better way than Facebook. Maybe some of you could recommend it, but to have a group that's ongoing where we could do more things like that, uh, where we take the teaching and then put it into action. So I have that in mind, but we won't have quite so much time for it. I, you know, I'm in this catch 22 between wanting to make it short enough that I can give you all the information or you know, long enough that I can give you the information and make it meaningful, but short enough that it doesn't have to be so terribly expensive and time consuming for all of you. So I'm kind of trying to dance in the middle of that. I see someone saying, what is it? MeWe, MeWe is better than Facebook. Shannon Doe, we'll have to check that one out. Somebody is using Telegram, but I don't know that, I don't know what kind of a, uh, venue that is. So are there any other questions from anyone? I see somebody still coming in. So we're really finishing up with the uh, main part of the information here and just ask answering questions about, let's see, Cindy, thanks for asking, what kind of time commitment would this training require? Um, what I'm going to do is one hour a week or, you know, it'll be kind of like this, an hour and maybe some question and answer. Well, for sure, there'll be question and answer time. So I would say an hour, hour and 15 minutes a week. And then, um, you know, I might suggest some things for you to do or not. But, uh, you know, there'll be that week to integrate and really kind of be with this. And then we'll go again the next week. And so there'll be five sessions for the Women of Beauty and Power. I think love is the answer is probably going to be another five hours and then um, ancient brain Boy, I keep getting more information. It'll probably be five hours as well. So we'll have 15 hours over uh, that many weeks or more. Uh, if we all decide as a group that we'd like to do it, we might take some time off around the holidays. But some people say to me, hey, that's when I have the most time off to listen. So anyway, we'll work around that. And uh, I think it'll be workable uh, just that hour a week. So anything else? Thanks for sending love. Really appreciate it. So much appreciate all of you being on here. It's been really wonderful. It's nice to see your faces. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if now that it's a little quieter, I'm going to see if I can see any more of the faces. I've got such a a low level internet here that it isn't so easy to to see all of you i can see ginger and natalie cindy laurel there you are i don't know i'm not getting very far here oh there's patrick all right patrick good nice to see you i can't see everyone unfortunately but uh yeah, sure. well i want to thank shenandoah too because as uh Many of you have the experience to have a child in her homeschooling. It's like, yeah. So uh, anyway, I sure appreciate Shenandoah being here and all of the wonderful work she does for me right in the middle of everything else she's handling. So uh, I sure appreciate that. And uh, I appreciate Zoom and I wish I had invested in it. Oh, nice seeing you, Patrick. So, any other it's questions? It's been about 20 years since I saw you at the Dome. Ah! <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, gosh, that has been a while, hasn't it? We, we've lost a friend. and Yeah, we've, yeah. We've, uh, yep. We've had a lot of... A lot of big changes going on. A lot of really wonderful people right now are stepping out. You know, a lot of our elders... Um, I mean, I'm 77, and uh, some of the older ones, or even some of the younger ones, are are stepping out now. And uh, I'd like to think that some of those wise ones are going to be just kind of right up there, always uh, helping us out with the incredible challenges we're having now. 
And I really hope that as we walk forward, you know, we're coming into an election season. We're, we're coming into a time that's going to really make a difference. And, and I really am praying that that love and caring and kindness and, and uh, respect for diversity and, and unity and, and the real, really deep, what I think of as, as the deep American values are what come out of this. Because uh, we have such a remarkable opportunity here to create a golden time. That's what we're told is that we're right in this, this struggle and we're pushing ourselves right up against the edge of our survival. You know, our elders say that we only have a, um, one generation, which is about 20 years, we only have about that long to make the difference or we will be extinct as a human family. We are right, right on the edge of making so many challenges of destroying so much underneath us that we won't be able to do well. So it's a big time. It's like, wow, so much going on. And yet I think if we stand together, work together, learn everything we can learn, that we will be able to make the difference. I would just so much pray that that's the case. And that's what I'm doing. I stood on the edge of the Mediterranean a while ago. I was confined in Southern France, which was quite nice. And uh, I stood there and during the, the solstice full moon, I pledged another 20 years of making a difference in any way I possibly can. And I know that joining with you will be a part of that. So let's see if there are any other questions. And if not, I'm going to say a little, a little prayer and uh, let, us, let us go. And we are, hopefully this recording did well. And uh, we'll be sending the recording out to you. And, uh, you know, we had about 150 people sign up. So we'll get this recording to them. And uh, I'm just really thankful that the, we didn't have many wobbles. So I think the, the wonderful energies of life helped us. And uh, we certainly prayed for that before we started. So I'm going to pick up this eagle feather and, uh, and finish up with a prayer. Oh, beautiful and loving heart of creation. We are so grateful for this opportunity to be together, for this wonderful ability to share our hearts and connect. And I ask that each heart is uplifted and nourished by what we've done, and that something deep and rich sets in that even beyond any words I could offer, Creator, it's your healing and your love that, that I'm bringing through and sending forward to bless these people. We know that so many are challenged, some of us in what seem like little ways and others in the world, absolutely, absolutely challenged. So we send our love and our prayers to each and every one May everyone be blessed in the way that serves them most. And may we all find that place in our heart to offer our love and our beauty and our gifts into the world in a way that makes a difference for each and every one of us and for all our relations. Ho, Metokriasen, for all our relations. We send this love. All right, you all. I'm going to end this and... Uh, I'm ending it with much love for all of you. Bye-bye.